Welcome to my brand new Blender tutorial in which we will learn how to create this amazing spray bottle product visualization scene. Now this tutorial is extremely easy and is made for Blender beginners who have very little experience. However, you will be expected to know the basics like navigating the viewport, moving, rotating and scaling stuff and using the edit mode etc. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering the basics of modeling, texturing, lighting and rendering in Blender so you can take your 3D art skills to the next level. Now the good thing about this class is that this class will show you the raw process of a 3D artist in creating art. We'll be solving all the problems and making all creative decisions together. So what are you waiting for? Just start this class today and take your Blender skills to a whole new level. Thank you. Alright guys, so we are inside the beautiful world of Blender 3D and here we're going to be creating that amazing bottle which you saw in the intro. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the default cube. Uh, by the way, just save your project. And yeah, uh, I'm just going to be creating a new mesh which is going to be a cylinder. Now the size of the cylinder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front view and we're going to be shaping out the whole um, bottle. So I'm just going to press tab to go into edit mode and we're going to be going to the x-ray mode because if you don't, if you select this, you're going to see that only half of them are going to be selected. So I'm just going to go to my x-ray mode. Now if I select them, you're going to see that all these vertices are going to be selected. Perfect. So that is, that is exactly what we want. And apart from that here, yeah, let's just start. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, um, uh, first of all, I'm just going to be increasing uh, the the scale in the z-axis so I'm going to press z uh, I'm just going to press s and z to scale that up in the z-axis perfect something like that and now I'm going to be selecting these vertices I'm going to be extruding them out slightly and I'm going to be uh, pressing s and I'm going to be bringing it down so that we actually scaling it down and I'm going to be doing it once again e once again and let's just extrude it out one last time something like that should be good so now you're going to see that we have our base ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to press anywhere right here so that we can select all these edges. And I'm just going to press F to fill it in. Now you're going to see if I go to face select mode, you're going to see that we have a face here as well. Perfect. So F to fill it in. Yeah. Now I'm just going to go up. Let's go back to the uh, vertice mode. Let's go up and let's, um what do you call it? Let's extrude this as well. And I'm going to be... uh scaling it down as well something like that let's extrude it once again scale it down even more this is a tad bit though and then i'm going to be scaling it up and let's just do it one last time perfect so this is going to be our basic shape of the bottle i'm just going to turn off the extra mode now you're going to see that this obviously is very um blocky and very sharp and we obviously don't want that so <clears throat> to make this smooth what i'm going to do is i'm going to be going to the modifier menu and we're going to be adding a subdivision surface modifier now you're going to see that although it does make it quite smooth, uh, it adds these weird, uh, this weird stuff right here. So yeah, to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, going to face select mode. We're going to be selecting the top face and we're going to be insetting this face by pressing I. So press I, just inset it, something like that. And I'm going to see it gets rid of that weird shading issue. And same with this, I'm just going to be selecting the down face, inset it slightly, something like that should be great. And I'm going to see that our bottle is looking pretty good. However, we are going to be shaping it out properly. So let's just, for now, increase the segments to 3 and 3. Actually, I think 2 should be fine. And then we can just go ahead and shade it smooth. <clears throat> so now you're going to see that it looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm just going to go to edit mode. Go back to edit mode. And now we can just add loop cuts to um, to actually shape it out the way we want. So the, uh, if we have a loop cut, uh, for example, if I press Control R and I add a loop cut right here, and if I move it up, you're going to see that it makes it it makes this edge sharper right so i'm going to add another loop cut right here and we're going to be making something like that because we want this edge to be pretty visible not that visible though uh so yeah one thing which we can do is we can with these edges selected we can just press double g g twice and we can move it down maybe something like that should be good probably yeah something like that probably should be good however what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my x-ray mode and I'm going to take this, I'm going to be scaling it down quite a lot. Something like that should be good. Let's take these and let's scale them down as well. And perfect, cool. So the bottom, for the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also be, <clears throat> I'm also going to be adding some loop cuts. So control R, just bring it down, something like that. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another loop cut right here to give it more definition, you know. Uh, it doesn't really look that great, to be honest. So what I'm going to do instead is that I'm just going to move it slightly up. I think something like that should be good. Yeah, perfect. So we can maybe even add a loop cut right here as well. 
Nope, never mind. So this is just trial and error, and most of 3D modeling is just trial and error. Just trying to see what looks good and what doesn't. I think that should be a good shape. Yeah, one thing which we can do certainly is that we can just go to our X-ray mode and we can go to point select mode, already see select mode, and we can just take this and we can GZ and move it up. Something like that. So that it has more of a flat base. Perfect. Now one other thing which I'd like to do is I'll all click this to select this edge loop and edge ring, it's also called that. I'm just gonna press G twice and I'm gonna move it up slightly. All right, so I think that shape is fine for now, <clears throat> although we can obviously make changes later on. So yeah, the main body is, uh, the main bottle is done. And now let's start working on uh, this top thing right here. So yeah, let's, uh, without even further ado, let's do that. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding another cylinder. So we have a cylinder right here. And I'm just gonna be making sure that it's in the center. Perfect. And now let's just move it up. G, Z, for move it up. And now I'm gonna be scaling it down quite a lot. Maybe something like that should be good. Or maybe even slightly less. Yeah, perfect. GZ a little up. And I think that should be a good spray cap. Bottle cap. I think that's what it's called. Let's just go to edit mode by pressing tab. Let's just turn on this x-ray mode. And now we're just going to be shaping this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, GZ. Just I'm going to be bringing it down slightly. Something like that. And then what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be going to the face select mode. We're going to be selecting the top face. Just like that. And we're going to be insetting it slightly. And then we're going to be extruding it once again by pressing E. So that we create this face, right? this thing right here. And next, what we can do is that we can extrude, it, uh, we can insert it once again. This time a little more. And then we can extrude it up again for that face. Uh, for that, um, what do you call it? Uh, basically, this has the thing which you spray out of, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Uh, apart from that, I think we are good to go. Let's just uh, scale this down slightly. Let's get out of our extra mode. I think that is pretty good. However, I think this needs to be, this needs to come slightly down. Something like that should be good. Yeah, I think that is pretty good. Looking good. So what I'm gonna do with this is that first of all, let me just add a um, subdivision surface. You're gonna see that it looks absolutely <laughs> trash. Uh, that is because we have to make some adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be, first of all, I'm gonna be selecting the top face and I'm gonna be inserting it to get rid of that issue. Actually, I'm gonna be inserting it slight bit so that we have a really sharp edge up there. And we're gonna be doing the same exact thing with the bottom face as well. So something like that, just tie it, it's just a tad bit. And now we can just add, uh, start adding loop cuts. So I'm just gonna add a loop cut right there to make this edge pretty sharp. And I'm gonna be adding another loop cut right here as well to make this edge pretty sharp as well. Let's add one right here as well. Something like that, perfect. And let's add one right here. Cool. And let's add one right here as well. So we're just making the, making sure that the shape is pretty um blocked out and it's not um very mushy because it's a plastic spray bottle. It's not uh, made out of jelly. <laughs> Uh, I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, so one thing which I'm noticing is that these are a little, uh, these have a little jagged edges, a few jagged edges. I'm just gonna right click and shade smooth. Perfect. Now one thing which we need to make, yeah, one other thing which we need to make is that, actually, I, I kinda wanna um, take these. So I'm just gonna go to my X-ray mode. I'm gonna take everything to like there. And then I can just scale it down slightly. Just a tad bit. I think that looks better because, yeah, that, that just looks better. And then and then we can just add a few loop cuts right here. Just one actually to make this edge sharper. And one right here as well to make this edge a little sharper as well. And I think we're good to go with the top one. Perfect. So yeah. Okay, let me just add one right. Oops, never mind. I did not mean to add that. Let's add one right here as well. And perfect, cool. So that is done. And next up, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be creating the cap, the transparent cap, which is going to sit on top. Yeah, one thing which, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, I just have this habit of making changes later on. And I'm just going to make these changes, just a few ones. Uh, I'm just going to press Alt and Shift and select this edge ring as well. 
And with all the selected, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to be scaling it down slightly. And then I'm going to be moving it down as well. GZ and move it down. Something like that. And even more. GZ, move it down. So I hope this is not confusing because I'm just going to, I'm scaling it down. And in hindsight, in hindsight, I should have, all, I should have like inserted these faces a little more in the start. So yeah. So yeah, apart from that, we are basically done with the shape. And let's start move, uh, let's start making that gap. So for the gap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding another mesh, which is going to be a cylinder. What a surprise. Uh, and I'm just going to be scaling it down to something like that. GZ, move it up. Something like that should be good. Yeah, so something like that should be good. Okay, so apart from that, I think we are good to go. Just a tad bit, just move it a little up. And I'm just gonna turn on the X-ray mode so that I can see what is actually going on. So this is uh, slightly larger than our um, our bottle, which is exactly what we want. I'm just gonna make it a little smaller though. So the size is pretty good. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna first of all, uh, go to face select mode and I'm gonna insert the top face slightly. And I'm gonna create a loop cut right here. So we're doing this before we add the subdivision surface modifier. I mean, obviously we could do it afterwards as well, but I just hate seeing that weird mesh which the subdivision surface modifier is gonna create. So yeah, anyways. Uh, so now I'm just gonna add a modifier, subdivision surface modifier, bump up the segments. Uh, yeah, just two should be good and shade smooth because render times matter as well. And we should be, you should care about them as well. Anyways, so apart from that, I think it's pretty good. One thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge ring right here by pressing Alt and just clicking any one of the edges. I'm going to press G twice to make it like slightly um, less sharp. I hope that makes sense. Perfect. So apart from that, our bottle is almost done. One thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to be making those um uh, that thing which you which those uh, that grip. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be making that grip. I think it's called a grip. I hope it is. Um, so what I'm going to do with that is that I'm going to be um, selecting this and we're going to be selecting all these individually. So it's, it is, it's just going to take us a, a minute or two. Just press and hold shift and keep selecting all these. Well, 3D modeling is a little tedious sometimes, but um, it is what it is. So with all these selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pressing right click and subdivide. And we're going to be doing that same exact thing once again. So now you're going to see that we have enough geometry now. So with all these selected, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these now. And once you've selected one of them, we're just, go, we're just going to go to select and we can just go to um, select similar and we're going to select this length option right here. So you're going to see that all these are going to be automatically selected. Uh, we could do this before as well, but I just wanted to show you the long method first uh, so that you should also be used to doing long methods as well. You should not always try to see a uh, seek for shortcuts. By the way, just save your project. And now without these selected, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to press Control B and I'm going to be beveling these a little bit. That's way too much. Just a tad bit. Something like that. And now we can just, um, with all these selected, we can just press E to extrude and just S to um, extrude them inside. So just a tad bit, something like that should be good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. However, it is, I think it's a little too much. So I'm just gonna be extruding them in slightly. Something like that should be good, yeah. Now what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be creating a loop cuts around the edges so to make it um, more what do you call it? To make it more sharp, something like that. A loop cut right there and a loop cut right there. That is perfect. Okay, so now you're gonna see that we have all those um, uh, things as well. I think it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So once with that is done, Next up, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be adding the label. Now, the label is something which I've made already. Uh, where is it? 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 Uh, I'm just going to find the label in a bit. Just give me a second. And 
yeah so the label is, yeah so the label is right here and you're gonna see that it is the best name ever bruh uh yeah it's the only spray you'll ever need and the best spray like ever so yeah that is some good um that is a nice label right there so what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be going back to blender and let's actually create a plane now i'm just gonna add a mesh plane i'm just gonna bring it forward in the x-axis and then i'm just gonna be rotating it so i'm just gonna press r uh y and then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees in the y-axis and that is perfect so wh what i'm gonna do is now is i'm just gonna bring it close to this and we're gonna we're just gonna see the size just gonna check how the size is gonna look so the label right now if I just show you again you're gonna see that it's um it's vertical basically right so what we want what you want is that we want it to be uh, we want this label to be vertical as well so I'm just gonna be uh, scaling it down slightly and then I'm gonna be scaling it up in the uh, in the z-axis something like that I think that should be perfect so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to be uh, we're going to be going to uh, pressing tab to go into edit mode just press a u and we're going to be using smart uv project cool now what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be going to uh the shading tab and just don't be just don't panic it's not going to be hard it's going to be very very simple i'm just going to create a new material for this and this base color i'm just going to drag this uh texture right here this uh, uh label and so i'm just going to be attaching this in the project section of this class by the way so that you guys can easily um take it and yeah I'm just going to be attaching it to the color. Now you're going to see that this orientation is wrong. And that is because um, it's just uh, it's just like that by default. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be pressing this. And I'm going to be pressing Control T. Now, this is only going to work if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, which you can enable by going to Edit, Preferences. And then Add-ons. And just search for Node Wrangler. You're going to see that Node Wrangler. If it's not turned on, just check it. And it's going to be turned on. Perfect. Now with this... Uh, after pressing Control T, you're gonna see you're gonna be presented with these options. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be increasing the rotation uh, in the what do you call it in the x-axis, something like that. If I just increase it, you're gonna see that it's uh, not the correct axis actually. So I'm just gonna be rotating it in the z-axis, something like that. So exactly 90 degrees. Oops, 90 degrees. And it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, the size and everything is basically fine. Yeah, it's perfect. So, yeah. So our, our um, label material is perfectly done. And one thing which I'm gonna do, we, one thing which I'm gonna do now is that let's just move it forward a little bit. And we're gonna be using a modifier uh, called the shrink wrap modifier. So the shrink wrap modifier, this one right here, just apply it to this. And you're gonna see that it's not doing anything. And we can just set the target to be this bottle cylinder. And I'm going to see that it's going to attach itself to that. And which is very underwhelming. We don't want it to be like that. So uh, to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to uncheck this. And now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be, um, first of all, adding a subdivision surface modifier before that. So and we're, just, we're just going to be setting it to simple because we don't want it to um, turn deform this into weird shapes. And we're just going to be increasing the segment, uh, the levels to four. And now, if I turn this on, you're going to see that it's going to be attaching pretty well. However, you're going to see that it's it's very weird. It's looking very weird, isn't it? So what we can do, so what we can do now is that we can add another modifier, uh, which is going to be the solidify modifier. Where is the solidify modifier? Here it is. So we can just add it later, uh, add it next, and we can just set the offset to one, and we can just increase the thickness. Now you're going to see that it's very um tall and why is that so if i go to my uh, uh this um look dev mode you can see the texture is also stretched isn't it so to fix that what i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to be pressing s to scale it and y to scale it on the y-axis i'm just going to be scaling it something like that until it just looks fine yeah that looks pretty good doesn't it we can just scale it up overall as well yeah perfect now i'm just gonna, obviously i'm going to be reducing obviously i'm going to be reducing the thickness to something like that I think that looks pretty good and yeah so it's still pretty tall and I'm just gonna be increasing the size something like that yeah perfect let's actually increase these um, levels so that it um, attaches better I think that looks pretty good doesn't it 
the thickness is way too much still uh, let's make it 0 0.005 how about that perfect and now since paper is not perfectly sharp you're also going to be adding a bevel modifier to this in the end and we can just increase the segments to like four I guess that should be good right click shade smooth as well and we can just turn on these uh, auto smooth as well so that's just gonna make it look um, it make, that's just gonna make the shading look better by the way just save your project and yeah so our label is finally done and I think it looks pretty good doesn't it so I mean you, there are there are other ways you could do this uh, without these many modifiers uh, there are obviously uh, there are obviously other ways which you can do uh, you could obviously use uh, the simple deform modifier you could um, even uh, grab some geometry from this you can just like select these faces and you could just uh, bring bring them forward but I just prefer this method because I think it's much better and you can just I'm just gonna scale it up slightly uh, nope I'm just gonna scale it down in the y-axis something like that maybe yeah perfect cool so that is looking pretty good and I think our bottle is basically done now let's start move uh, let's moving let's start Let's move on to the next step, which is going to be the texturing, the lighting, and finally the rendering. All right, so let's move on to the next part, which is going to be lighting the scene. So um, actually, before lighting, let's just do the texturing first, and then we're going to be focusing on the lighting later on. So I'm just going to add, uh, just let's just add a basic lighting setup so that we can like actually see what's going on. I'm just going to add a light right here. Uh, let's make it, let's go to these light settings, and I'm just going to increase the power to something, like, I don't know, 100 and let's increase the radius as well because um yeah and let's move it up yeah so a light with a, high, a higher radius will it's going to give you soft softer shadows and that's something we certainly need so if i render this you're going to see that it's going to look trash because we're in ev so let's go to cycles and it still looks trash because well first of all the light is way too light how about a thousand volts or watts I think that should be good however I'm just gonna bump up the radius a little more and I'm gonna be moving it in along the x-axis just a little bit like that and let's just bump up the power to something like 2000 I think that should be enough light for us to start working on the textures so for the textures what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the bottle first and so for the bottle I'm just gonna be adding a texture uh, I'm just gonna be creating, creating a new material and we're just going to go down to, first of all, let me just increase the transmission because we're trying to make it a, um, what do you call it? A transparent, well, not a transparent, a translu translucent um, bottle. So, yeah. Actually, before that, what I'm, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go to add mesh plane. Let's go to, let's go back to our object mode. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to be creating our floor first. So, what we can do is that we, just, we can just take it down, uh, G, and just hold control so that it's uh, snapping, so that snapping is turned on, and just move it a little up, G, control, uh, actually never mind, I'm just gonna place it something like that maybe. So a little bit should be uh, intersecting, that's just gonna ensure that it's um, completely flush with the ground. So I'm just gonna increase the size of that, something like that should be good. And now with the selected, we're gonna be creating an infinite background, right? So I'm just gonna press tab on my keyboard to go to edit mode. And we're just gonna be selecting this edge and we can just extrude it up. Press E, just move it up. And now you're gonna see that we can extrude it anywhere. But if I press Z, you're gonna see that it's gonna extrude it along the Z axis. Something like that should be good. Now you can just select this edge and we can press control B and just bevel it and move your mouse scroll, uh, mouse scroll wheel up to create more segments. Something like that should be good, perfect. So now I'm sorry, going back to object mode, and now if I right click and shade smooth because <clears throat> it did have some, it did have some jagged edges. Now if I uh, go to my actually I don't have a camera right now, so yeah let's do that next. Let's just set up a camera so that we know what we're working with. I'm just gonna add a camera, and did it add? Where is my camera? Oh there it is. So I'm just gonna press this camera button right here, <clears throat> and now you're gonna see that we can either uh, move our camera with our move tools. Uh, but that's going to be a very inefficient and slow way to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my camera view and I could just open this menu right here and we can go inside the view menu. And here we can just lock this camera to view option. We can just check it. And I'm going to see that wherever I move my uh, view, you're going to see our camera is going to go with it, right? So we can just play, place our camera that way, which is going to be pretty good. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my output properties and I'm going to increase the Y. Uh, so something like, I don't know, 
maybe 2300. Something like that should be good because we want it to be a vertical render, something like that. And let's uh, increase the, let's go to these camera settings and let's increase the focal length to something like, I don't know, 90 millimeters, something like that should be good. Let's just place it properly. I think something like that should be pretty good. Let's just uncheck it back again and let's zoom in so that we can see it better. And I'm just gonna hide this camera because this line is kind of distracting. And now if I render it, you're gonna see that it is looking pretty dark. And that is because, um, well, our light is turned off. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is that, I guess we'll have to just uh, deal with it. Yeah, so one thing which I can do is, we can just move this light a little up. GZ, move it up so that it's uh, more even. Something like that should be good. Now let's just uh, start working with the materials, okay? So I'm just gonna be uh, going back to these uh, material settings and this transparent uh, transmission, what we can do is that we can to bump up the, uh, the roughness a little bit to make it translucent. And then we can just add a color to this. So something like, I don't know, maybe a, maybe we want something like that. But that doesn't necessarily look good right now because right now we don't have any uh, material for our background. So I'm just gonna select my background and we're gonna be creating a new material for this. You can just set this to anything you want. This is totally pers your personal preference. Preference. I would recommend you going with a brighter color because that's gonna give you a better look in my opinion. So let's uh, go back to our look dev mode and let's first just finish with the lighting. So this is gonna be our main key light. Uh, and this power, I'm just gonna set it to 3000 watts because you should have plenty of light in your scene. And uh, now I'm just gonna press Shift and D to duplicate this and I'm gonna be pressing Shift and Z again to lock it to the X and Y axis. I'm just gonna be moving it somewhere around there. That's gonna be our key light, something like that. Uh, let's go to the top view. Let's place it somewhere around there. And this key light, what I'm gonna do with this is that I'm gonna be reducing the power to only 1000. Yes, yeah, so my key light is gonna be 1000 watts. And what I'm gonna do next is that I'm going to be taking this main light and I'm gonna be duplicating it once again. And let's just press Shift Z so that we're not moving it in the Z axis. And I'm just gonna be placing it uh, near the background, something like that. And I'm gonna be increasing the radius quite a lot. Something like that. Now what this is gonna do is that this is gonna be um, lighting our background basically, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just gonna, <clears throat> Let's see how it looks. Now you're gonna see, if I turn this off, you're gonna see that back, the background looks pretty dull and dark. But if I turn it on, you're gonna see that it looks pretty good. Now, one thing which I'm gonna be asking you guys to do right now is first of all, just save a project. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to my render properties and I'm going to be going to uh, going down to this color management thing. And here you're gonna see that, uh, first of all, just make sure that your view transform is filmic. If it's standard standard or anything like that, it's not gonna look that great. It's not gonna look that realistic. So I recommend you to set it to um, filmic. And after that, this look, I'm gonna ask you to set it to high contrast or medium high contrast, depending on your scene. I think medium high contrast is just good for this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna go there and let's um, just uh, change this base color. Let's just, uh, actually let's just make the uh, saturation zero so that it's basically white. Now we're gonna see uh, how it looks. Let's try making it, making it metallic for some reason. I'm, I'm just trying out random things. And because honestly, 3D art is art and art is supposed to be subjective. So one thing which you can do if, if, that, if this is taking too much time to render, you can just press Control B and you can then specify a region which you want to render and it's gonna render only that region. Now it's gonna be much faster than uh, if, as compared to if it was um, rendering the whole scene. So yeah, I use that all the time and I think it should be very useful for you as well. So the roughness, I'm gonna increase it quite a bit. Something like that. Maybe let's reduce this uh, transmission to something like that. I think something like that should be good because um, now if I just go back and set this whole region to render, uh, you're gonna see that it looks pretty good. However, I feel like it's missing something. And I think I should set the base color to something like that. Let's actually bring back the the transmission. I think something like that should be good. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the roughness quite a bit. Uh, and actually I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. We can obviously make changes later on if you want, but let's actually move to other things first. So this uh, this um, label, I think it's pretty good. 
However, I'm gonna I'm just gonna do one thing. I'm just gonna go back to my look dev mode, and we're gonna be scaling it up in the y-axis slightly. Something like that should be probably better. Let me just render it and let's see how it looks. So our whole scene is looking pretty good now. It's looking pretty realistic, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, so no, never mind. I'm just gonna uh scale it down slightly, just a tad bit. I think that should be the sweet spot. Something like that should be good. Never mind. Uh, okay, cool. So let's move on to the next step, which is uh, let's add our uh, material to this first. So I'm just gonna create a new material. Let's name it um, plastic. So I'm just gonna be increasing the transmission to one. And that's just gonna make it um, totally transparent. And I'm gonna be reducing the roughness quite a lot. Let's render it and let's see how it looks. Okay, so it is a little too, um, what do you call it? It's a little too weird looking for some reason. Let me just get out of my camera and let's see what the issue is. I'm not exactly so sure what the issue is. So let's just uh, add, uh, add, add our material to this right now. And then we're gonna be coming back to that. Anyway, so this is gonna be a dark material, a really dark material. And it's gonna be pretty shiny, a little shiny, not that much. Let's increase the specular, something like that. Increase, actually roughness is fine. That should basically be it, yeah, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, now the only problem we have right now is, well, um, let's make it a little less. Yeah, I think that's just fine. How about we turn out the metallic, Never mind. How about we, yeah, actually, I think it's fine. Uh, okay, so the problem is this, right? So how do we fix that? Okay, so I did experiment around a little bit and I was trying to find why this uh, weird shading is happening. And the problem I uh, figured out was that right now, uh, this is basically magnifying our, um, uh, our inside parts, right? And the reason for that is because our normals are not correct, right? So if I just uh, press, press tab, so go into edit mode, just press A, and if I go to mesh, the normals, and if I press flip, you're gonna see that now it's gonna, it's just gonna become fine. And it's not gonna cause that issue anymore. So now, if I just go ahead, and you're gonna see that it's basically perfect now. So we can just go ahead and, um, what do you call it? Uh, mess around with the IOR a little bit. How about that? Let's actually reduce the met metallic. Something like that might be good. Um, let's uh, let's reduce the IOR to something like that. How about that? Uh, let's bump it up a little bit. How about 1.1? I'm just gonna reduce the roughness a little bit. Or maybe we can just bump it up. Not that much, obviously. Something like that should be good. How about we um, mess around with the specular? I'm just gonna let it render for a minute and then we're gonna see how it looks and we're gonna figure out ways to make it look better. Okay, so I did uh, mess around with the settings a little bit and I think these settings are basically working fine for me. So the metallic, I just increase it a little bit and the specular, I just set it to, d uh, to the default, 0 0.5. The roughness is this much, 0 0.216 and uh, the transmission is one. Well, I mean, these are pretty basic settings and these just these just seem to work for me, work the best for me. For so I hope they work for you as well. Now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be working on our lighting a little more. So uh, for that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be uh, splitting this uh, viewport into two. So I'm just going to right click right here, vertical split. I'm going to split it somewhere like that. So this one, uh, I'm just going to turn on the rendered mode for this, and I'm going to go to the camera. This is just going to be our final like rendered view. I'm just going to turn this off. Let's bring it something like that. That seems to be good. Let's just increase it. Let's only render this part so that we're not wasting any resources. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna be converting these lights into area lights because um, point lights are not that great in my opinion for shadows and everything, for reflections especially. I'm just gonna make them area lights. That's gonna be an area light. Uh, now, obviously, this is not uh, oriented perfectly, uh, oriented correctly. Let me just go back to my object mode. Uh, I don't know what this mode is called. 
it's viewport shading mode, never mind. So yeah, I'm just gonna scale that up slightly um, about that, and I'm just gonna position it so that it's um, lighting our scene, lighting our bottle. Perfect. And now for this uh, main light, I'm just gonna be converting this into an area light as well. And I'm gonna be making sure that it's facing our um, object as well. So we can, what we can do is that we can go to our top view and we can just position our lights a little, um, basically we can just do whatever we want. I think something like that, something like that should be good. Perfect. So, um, and this light, I think this light is what's causing the problems in these um, reflections. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be uh, reducing the power of this, maybe 1500, how about that? Or maybe not, or maybe I can just move it down. GZ, move it down, nope. Oh, yeah, I can just move it up because that's going to do the same exact effect. And it's not going to cause our shadow problems as well. So I'm just going to set it to 3000. Uh, so it's, uh, so that it's basically lighting our background. However, it's not uh, messing with our uh, shading and everything. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to be making this material a little darker because now we have good lighting. So it's way too um, bright. I think that is looking pretty good. Perfect. So apart from that, uh, I think one other thing which we should do is that uh, now we can just tweak the material. So I'm just going to make it a little darker, just a tad bit. And let's make it less transparent. How about that? Never mind. Let's actually give it a color. So um, maybe how about we make it a little orange? How about we give it an orange tint, something like that. But the, um, what do you call it? Our label is blue though. So I don't know if that's going to match. Uh, also, one thing which I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be tweaking my camera a little bit. So let's just uh, toggle the camera to view. Let's go ahead and reduce our um, focal length to 50 millimeters, back to 50 millimeters. And I'm just going to be bringing it something like that. So that looks a little more natural. Looks like it's being shot. It looks like an actual product shot and not a... Actually, let's just set it to, I don't know, like 70 but like maybe it's something like that i think that looks pretty good doesn't it something like that should be good yeah that works okay cool so apart from that i think it looks pretty good i think everything looks good however one thing which i'm going to be doing is that let's just uh, get out of my this rendered mode let's just turn it off before my computer blows up uh okay so one thing which i'm going to be doing is that let's take this and let's hide it for now and we're gonna be creating that hole out of which you, uh, out of which the spray comes out, right? So yeah, cool. So I'm just gonna to go to edit mode, and what we can do is that actually instead of edit mode, we can just use the boolean modifier, okay? So what the boolean modifier is gonna do is that we can just take one object and we can subtract it from another object, right? Although the boolean modifier can be used to um, uh, used for the difference, union, or the intersection of two objects, but we're gonna be using for the difference option. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to add a mesh, which is going to be a cylinder. Perfect. So let's go to our side view. Let's um, rotate this 90 degrees. And let's G, move it up. And obviously I'm just going to be scaling it down quite a lot. So I'm just going to be placing it somewhere like that, I guess. So basically the size of a spray nozzle, I think that's what it's called. Nozzle, yeah, I think. I think that should be good. How about we scale it up a tad bit? Something like that seems to be perfect. So now I'm just going to be moving it a little ahead. So X. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, uh, let's just, um, what do you call it? Let's just add a modifier to this. Actually, I'm just going to be adding a modifier to this. Uh, and the modifier is going to be a Boolean modifier. And the object is going to be, oops, never mind. The object is going to be this one right here. And with this applied, you're going to see that these shading issues are happening. If I right click and shade it flat, you're going to see that those shading issues disappear. Uh, and well, I mean, this, uh, the shading issues are what tells you, basically this is what tells you to, uh, tells you that um, 
the boolean modifier is actually working and to fix them what you got to do is you got to go to uh, this vertex uh, object data properties and down in these normals you can just turn on this auto smooth auto smooth thing and that's just going to fix the problem how it works how it works is a little too complex so i'm not going to go into that de that much detail but yeah just know that it's going to fix your issues and it's just a magical modifier magical option which it's gonna solve all your problems <laughs> anyways um so what i'm gonna do with this is that we can just hide it and you're gonna see that our um boolean modifier is being uh, is being applied properly i think that is too big isn't it no i think it's fine cool okay so uh i would not recommend you to apply this boolean modifier because if we do that you're gonna see if i apply it you're gonna see that these weird shading problems are gonna come back and well even if i shade it flat you're going to see that they're not going to go away because uh, we well we are having our subdivision surface so i'm just going to not i'm not going to recommend you to apply it just leave it on and what we're going to be doing is that we're just, we're just going to be oops we're just going to be selecting this and we can just hide it from render and from your what do you call it your viewport perfect so that is what we want all right cool so that is done and what we're going to be doing now is that we can just actually make that um cylinder visible again for a minute i'm just going to be shift d duplicating this and i'm just going to be bringing it down in size let's just uh hide that previous one yeah perfect now this one is going to be our um that little dot uh which is going to be used to spray the spray if that makes any sense okay perfect Cool. So I think it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So one thing which I'm going to be doing is that let me just turn that back on and let's try rendering it again to see how this looks. I think it looks pretty good, isn't it? Doesn't it? One thing which we can do is that I don't think I'm not really liking this blue that much. So we can just go to our shading menu and we can just uh, change the color. So I'm just going to select all this and I'm going to move it back. Oops back we can just search for a new node uh bright contrast i think that should do the job and I, I think i should just increase the contrast a lot so that it's um basically blue oops yeah i think that should look pretty cool as well shouldn't it what do you say i think that should oops as yes, we can just uh, play around with these and let's see which looks good. Let's try rendering it and let's see how it looks then. It looks way too bright. No, no, no. I'm not, there is no way I'm using that. Uh, okay, how about we do minus one? How about we reduce? Never mind. Uh, so I'm just going to increase the contrast to 100 and I'm just going to be bringing the brightness to zero. I think that should look pretty good. However, I'm just gonna give it a render to see how it actually looks. Or we can obviously use like, we can like convert it outside of um, Blender. But I think that should just do the job. Yeah, I think that is looking pretty good now. Yeah, it's matching the vibe much more. Uh, and I think, why do I feel like we are already done? Uh, I think we are done basically. Uh, so our, um, what do you call this? Our, what do you call this? This uh, bottle is almost done. And let me just reduce the transmission a little bit. So that it's a little less um, opaque. How about we make it darker? Something like that. And I think that should be pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good already. Uh, now, obviously, you can go around and go ahead and mess with the background. This is something I would definitely recommend and i really like playing with colors and everything and obviously if you are doing it for a professional render if you are um making it for a website or something you should obviously go with white um unless your client uh specifically asks you not to for some reason i don't know why anyone would anyone would do that one thing which we can do uh is that we can reduce the roughness of our background so that we can have some reflections maybe I'm not too sure about that though. Never mind, I'm not gonna have any reflections, so just bump the roughness all the way up and bring the specular all the way down. 
I think that is looking pretty good. So I guess that is pretty much it for today, guys. We are done with this tutorial. So I'm just going to be rendering this and then I'm going to be teaching you how to post process these renders and make them look much, much better than they do now. Because let's face it, every render does have the, uh, the room for improvement, the room to be better than it was before. And yeah, perfect. So enough of me, uh, enough of motivational talk by the motivational speaker, Nafe. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think that is basically it. So I'm just going to be rendering, trying to render it once again. And I think we are good to go. Let's just see this top part. If it's fine, it is. And I think we're pretty much done. So yeah, so to actually render this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my render settings first of all. Samples 4000 is way too much for me. My computer is going to fry. Well, it's not going to fry. It's going to take like a really long time. I'm going to set it to, I don't know, 1000 with denoise turned on. Now make sure that this denoise thing is turned on because it is an absolute lifesaver. Uh, I used to use Cinema 4D and it didn't have any denoiser option, or at least I wasn't aware of any. Um, and one of the reasons why I switched to Blender was because of this denoise, because honestly, uh, Blender is just much better, in my opinion, than Cinema 4D. It has a lot more features, including this denoise thing, which is very useful. Uh, yeah, so apart from that, I think everything else should be good. Just make sure that you cut in your color, color management, the look is set to either medium high contrast or high contrast. High contrast can also be good. However, I'm just going to go with medium high contrast. So yeah, uh, apart from that, just when you're ready, just save your project and hit render and render image. And now it's rendering guys, and I will see you when it's done. Okay, so guys, the rendering has complete. Uh, has completed and just ignore this render right here because I had to render multiple variations of this. So once you're done, just go to image, save as, and you can just save it wherever you want. Just press save as image. However, I've already saved it. So I'm just going to show you the different variations that I've created. What I did was I, yeah, here you go. What I did was I, was I just, um like, you know, I just changed the color of the bottle and I changed the background as well so that I can make like a few variations of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, opening Photoshop and I'm going to be editing these uh, inside Photoshop. So yeah, uh, that's going to be it. We just need to like uh, increase the contrast a little bit and increase the vibrance and stuff like that. Nothing major. Um, so yeah, just very simple adjustments. So I'm just going to be opening oh, one. Actually, let's um, go ahead and make a new uh, Let's add a new um, project. 1920 by 1080 p should be good for now. Uh, let's just open any of these. In my opinion, my favorite color is this blue. I'm just going to open that blue. That should be good. Perfect. So with this open, what I'm going to do is that we can just, um, first of all, just examine the render, examine the beauty of the render. And once you're done with that, <laughs> we can go on and start increasing the vibrance. I'm just going to increase the vibrance. Now, obviously, this is not a Photoshop tutorial. You can you do you can do this in any editing software you like. Uh, so you can use Adobe uh, Lightroom. You can use Snapseed, or anything you want. So, yeah, there are plenty of editing softwares out there. Next up, we can uh, probably work with uh, actually let's work with the brightness and contrast. I'm just going to make it a little brighter because product shots have to be catchy and yeah. We're just trying to make it catchy and increase the contrast slightly, not too much, so just a tad bit, something like that should be good. And I think that should be pretty good for now. So I'm just going to be teaching you how to make that thumbnail, which you saw in the um, intro as well. So yeah, for that, what I did was I imported all these. So I'm just going to import all of them, except for the blue one, obviously, because I already do have that imported. And I'm just going to import all of them. Perfect. So now you're going to see that we have all of them in place. Something like that should be good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be... Yeah, so one thing which we can do is that I can just uh, take the screen one and I can go to the pen tool and I can just cut some area so that... Um, I can just cut some area off of this that it's not um, that wide. I'm just going to make a selection and we can just uh, delete it. Oops, I can. I have to first rasterize it, delete it. And actually what I want to do is that I'm going to press Control I. Oh, never mind. I just want to invert the selection. I'm going to right click and select. Uh, so I'm just going to go to select, 
in worse and I can just delete it and I'm gonna see that it all looks pretty uniform and pretty good so yeah that is gonna be it uh, one thing which I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be reducing the vibrance sli slightly and the contrast as well because the other ones are being pretty contrasty and I am gonna be increasing the brightness slightly as well something like that should be pretty good in my opinion yeah something like that should be good and I'm just gonna be finally cropping it let's bring it down and bring it up from there so that it's like more visible yep perfect I'm just gonna be moving this one right here a little bit a little to the left and we can obviously um cut this as well just a tad bit so that it's not that um uh, it's not that wide select it right click rasterize and then delete it and obviously this is not a photoshop tutorial so i'm not going to be going into detail of what, I, what exactly i'm doing here but you get the idea hopefully and apparently and apart from that i think we are done so i'm just going to go to file export quick export as png i'm just going to be saving it right here uh thumbnail perfect cool so we are done with that guys and uh yeah that's basically it for today guys i hope you find this i hope you find this tutorial to be helpful and yeah apart from that uh if you have any questions just be sure to leave them i'll leave uh be sure to start a discussion down below uh, i was about to say leave a comment down below but this is this isn't youtube uh so yeah just be sure to start a discussion down below and um yeah, I'll be sure to respond and be sure to do your project as well because honestly project projects are very important and they're going to help you um, build your 3D skills because honestly just watching tutorials and just blindly following them is not really going to make you a better artist. Uh, making your own changes and actually doing projects is going to make you a much better artist. So yeah, I would definitely recommend you to, to do the project. project. And if you like this video, then be sure to um, leave a review down below. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.